information that came from faculty, students, and stakeholders. And uh, the architect did the renderings and brought that to the department. They say, oh, this is what we have done for Learning College based on the town hall meeting that was held here. I said, OK, now that you have done that, you need to go back to the stakeholders and with those renderings and say, this is what I came out with, with the suggestions that you gave, so that there will be input from this thing here as to how you see the future layout and, and programs that, uh, are, that are going to be presented to you shortly. But I'm, I'm telling you right now that what we're trying to do and it's not have in stone. It's only a roadmap. The board, several times, they have indicated to me that they do not want me to bring in any item for consideration for the expenditures of major A monies if there was no road plan as to how this was going to be expended in the future. In the process of so doing, we are finding out that the current major A bond fund that we have will not be sufficient to do all what we want to do. There will be need to be able to work with the state to participate and leverage the bond funding. There will be need to be able to ask our, our stakeholders in the community to be able to help us with another bond in the future. So therefore, in order to be able to see that we are competitive each time that we go out to the state to uh, augment and leverage the bond funding, we want to be able to show the community what is it that we've done with the major A monies that they have voted for already. We need to show them something. So toward that end, we went with the state, for instance, to, with the Library Learning Resource Center. And the state uh, agreed a few weeks ago to be able to participate <coughs> with the college and the district <coughs> up to the tune of $20 million for the, for the Library Learning Resource Center. But in order for us to be uh, more competitive in the future, we did recording of all the spaces throughout the college which was the job that Mars did for us. So uh, this is not set in stone. The dialogue as to what department will do, whatever, that is going to be discussion that we will have opportunity to have in the future, as the president said, after accreditation. This document is just only a roadmap, and I want you to look at it uh, in that uh, regard. I'm not going to take any more of your chat time. So we have uh, Mars get uh, the process started. Pardon me? I just want to start. Okay. Um, WLC will get that started. My name is Leo Ray Lynch. I'm with WLC Architects. I just want to give you a, some context as to why we have so many consultants up here and how everyone's sort of put together to understand. WLC is the master architect, which means essentially we're overseeing all of the, the master planning for all of the uh, campuses on Peralta, for Peralta. So we're doing Olive Alameda, Laney, um, <laughs> we're getting all the, Mer Merritt College and the uh, district office, as well as Berkeley City College, um, in terms of looking at it for the future of all, all four campuses, plus looking at the district offices as well. Uh, as part of that, we've uh, certainly prior architects has been hired as a consultant to us to actually focus specifically on Laney College. So Sarah Lentini and, and the Beverly Prior team will talk specifically about the recommendations that are, that are for this campus. And you've met with them, a lot of you have met with them repeatedly over the past uh, several months. Um, and some of you were here at the last meeting, some of you might be even new to this and the first time you've been here. So they'll probably go over some of that with you as well so you understand where they've been throughout this process, how many meetings they've had, and how many people they've met with. And so what we, what we want to do is, and then our other consultant is Mike Moss and, and Company. And Mike Moss is really the firm that dealt with the transition from the educational master plans that were done here on this campus and facility master plan, which we we're producing as a team. And they actually assisted in, in developing the district master plan and actually taking all the calculations done by Chuck McIntyre. Some of you know that he did a, a whole process before where he did environmental scans uh, for all, all the district campuses as well, and taking a number crunching process to see, and Dan's gonna go through that in much more detail, to really look at, you know, based on standards from the state, what are, what, are your what are your required needs for the different departments? What are you required in terms of square footage, in terms of area, in terms of classroom usage, all those things, and where are you at the end, at the end of the day, as of right now, where are you in terms of your square footages, and where will you be in 2022, which is the time frame we're taking this all out to. So we're gonna talk about the, the first phase is talking about actually a numbers game about 
where is the campus now in terms of where it should be based on state criteria? And then at the end of the day, how do we get that to all mesh by the facilities mass plan we're doing? And we're talking about taking some, moving some buildings around, moving departments around, perhaps even take some buildings down. And Cheryl will talk about some of those things in detail. So that's sort of the overall picture that we're going to be looking at here. So we're going to start off, I believe, with Cheryl giving the introduction to the whole process and uh, how we're going to go today. So. Thank you. Um, as Leo mentioned, I'm Cheryl with Beverly Park Architects. And just out of curiosity, show of hands, who was at our first town hall meeting? Because I see a lot of faces. OK, good. So we'll walk through kind of you know what, what we heard from that meeting so that those of you who might not have been here get a sense, and those of you who were can say, no, no, you've got it wrong. But um, <laughs> to get started, um, basically, this is how we've laid out our agenda today. Um, I'm going to turn it over in a minute to Dan from Moss and Company to go through the educational master plan process so you can understand the recommendations that they've made that we then responded to for the facilities. Um, Frederick from our team is going to go ahead and recap that initial town hall meeting so that we can capture what we heard as some of the goals and visions that you described. Um, then between Frederick and Byron, we're going to go through the con context, what we kind of call our planning context which is sort of all the things we've looked at and studied and analyzed with regard to your college um, that helps us set the stage for some of the future recommendations that we want to propose um, and what all kind of the contributing factors are, things that maybe need to be fixed or addressed or could work better or need to respond to a program need. And then we're going to go into actually showing you the concepts that we've come up with. And then I'll finish up by going through kind of how we might see this being phased and implemented, again, based on the priorities that you guys communicated at your town hall meeting to us before. So that's what we're about to do. So I'm going to turn it over to Dan so that he can go through the educational <coughs> side of it. Hi, I'm um, Dan Rosenberg from Moss Companies. And um, I'm going to walk through a bit about the process that we went through and give you some background on that. Um, first of all, this is the, the timeline that we were involved with. We started back in, in October, and um, there's a few steps left, obviously. We want to check back in with each of the campuses, which we're doing today. My chart, that's not a timeline. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then we'll be presenting to the board eventually, uh, towards the end of the month. Um, the idea here, and y again, you see a lot of consultants here a lot of you have put in a lot of hours over the past months and even years on planning. And this chart is really an attempt to kind of encapsulate the whole thing. So the educational master plans that each campus produced um, were the foundation of the work that we did. So you all created an educational master plan for, for Laney, and that was our basis. We also used the report generated by Chuck McIntyre which was an environmental scan <laughs> district-wide, uh, which provided a lot of research and a lot of numbers on population growth and things like that. Um, our plan has gone through many different names. Uh, however, it is a bridging document. It's a document that takes all the work from the plans that you created, the strategic <laughs> plan, the educational master plan, the McIntyre report, the unit plans, et cetera, and bridges to facilities. And one of the key elements in that bridge is Title V of the Education Code. And it's all kinds of arcane formulas and stuff like that. But in a, in a sense, what we're trying to do here is position you as a college for state funding. Ultimately, we want to put Laney in the best position to get matching funds to augment your bond. Now, historically, we've been able to see uh, uh, district bond funds augmented by 20, 25 percent. We're talking, you know, some serious numbers here. Now, right now, the state's funding level, you know, big goose egg. But that doesn't mean that the college can ignore this. The, col the state of California is going to fund facilities again. We're projecting it's probably going to be 2012, 2013. And whoever gets in the queue first with qualifying projects is going to be at the front of the line when that money's available. This combination of documents is going to show a comprehensive plan on the part of this district and this college to get you in the best position possible for that, uh, that funding. Um, the philosophy underwriting all the work that we do is that it's the program of instruction and support services that drives facility needs. 
That's why we're here. <laughs>